Hi, it's The Wire. It's Tuesday, August 31st, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk Jake Paul's win over Tyron Woodley. Let me just congratulate Jake Paul. Let me also say he delivered for us. Won the fight, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, what I want in terms of the big picture is for people to take a step back here, right? Rather than just look at Jake Paul, I want folks to look at his team because they've done a tremendous job with this 24-year-old. Notably, I want people to look at his trainer, B.J. Flores, right, and Jelion Love, who's also advising him. Now, Flores is interesting because Flores was a technician as a fighter. He's a very detail-oriented guy. And let's just say he really has helped Jake Paul. I'm really impressed with Jake Paul's approach here. Right now, it's a tribute to Jake Paul's support group, Flores, Jelion Love, that Jake Paul, a guy with a huge, and I mean huge, right hand, right? Nate Robinson still hasn't figured it out, right? You saw Ben Askren get stopped and be unable to talk coherently with the referee after getting off the canvas, right? Here is Paul, new to the sport, with a big right hand that has gotten him stoppages, plural, and yet he sees himself as a back foot counterpuncher, not as a front foot slugger. Put differently, Jake Paul doesn't have to hurt you to win fights. He is prepared to outbox you. Now you want to keep an eye on BJ Flores as he and his team train other perhaps younger fighters. Understand that Jake Paul at 24, as skilled and as promising as he is, and I believe he's very skilled, I believe he's very promising, but he's middle-aged for a fighter. Let's keep in mind that at his age, Floyd Patterson, Muhammad Ali, and Mike Tyson had already won the World Heavyweight Championship. To discover the great young fighters, keep an eye on the excellent and promising trainers, right? Because to me, these trainers love the sport so much that they're like Flo, the woman in the progressive commercials. You know, the beach commercial where Flo is there for a day in the sun with friends and she just can't help herself. She sees some people discussing insurance, and she just needs to help. I believe that's the way training is. They love boxing. They're trying to find and help young fighters with talent. Let's keep an eye on BJ Flores. You might be able to make a lot of money betting on the next fighter that Flores and his team train. Now let's talk about this fight. Now, while we did not see Jake Paul land a big right hand here, its presence was felt. It is what keeps Tyron Woodley outside early in this fight as he loses the first three rounds in an eight-round fight, right? Let me just point out that Woodley knew what happened to Nate Robinson. He understood that just leaping in the pocket was not going to get him where he wanted to go. He understood that Jake Paul has timing. Jake Paul can throw a big right hand backing up. Right? Jake Paul has rhythm, folks. So you had Woodley instead in a huge fight for him. This was his debut as a boxer. At 39 years old, Woodley didn't have a lot of time here, right? He needed to make an impression.
but cognizant of that right hand of Jake Paul's. He's outside. He's hardly throwing punches. He doesn't want to get countered. It's clear that he studied Jake Paul films, and he understood he's dealing with a big right hand and he's dealing with a counterpuncher. Let's talk about what else he's dealing with, because it's key to this fight. He's dealing with a foot speed gap. Folks, it's pronounced. In other words, Jake Paul is moving where he wants to go, and he's doing so faster than Woodley. Woodley's trying to pressure Paul, but Woodley can't cut off the ring on Paul. Right, folks? Jake Paul has legs. Let me also say this, too. Jake Paul, again, young guy. Right? Often people confuse boxing with fighting. Right? Some guy in his 20s who takes up the sport late might not respect the fact that it's a craft. Might believe wrongly that it's about being a tough guy. That's not Jake Paul. Understand, he's on his back foot the first three rounds. And because he has the foot speed advantage, and because he has the awareness to go on his back foot, he wins the first three rounds just moving and sticking a jab. Right? Let me just say, Jake Paul, for all the power, has the ability to win slow rounds. Let's also remember, too, that a 10-9 round earlier the fight counts the same. In fact, might even count more if you think about it, but counts the same as a 10-9 round later in the fight, should it go the distance. I would argue, too, that the early rounds matter because I believe judges get in habits, right? They see you in the first two rounds. Here's the third round. It's close. You know what? They're in the habit of voting for you. It's plausible. They might think it's your night. So then we get to the fourth round. Understand. Paul is not the only person with a punch here. In the fourth round, we find out that Tyron Woodley has a big right hand. He knocks down Paul. But somehow, this is 2021. Somehow, when you hit a guy, and the guy falls into the ropes, and the ropes keep him up, and folks... The primary rope keeping him up is not even the top rope. It's the second rope. In other words, Jake Paul is clearly knocked down in the fourth round. Clearly. But this is 2021. Somehow, refs have gotten in the habit of thinking they have discretion in situations like that. Folks, there's no discretion. Tyron Woodley knocks down Jake Paul in the fourth round. That round should have been a 10-8 round. Also understand the significance. I know, I feel Paul, even with a, that round scored as a 10-8 round, would have won the fight regardless, right? Because he gets a second win. He's able to then start trading with Woodley later in the fight. But I need for people to understand the concept of momentum here. Had that fourth round been scored a 10-8 round, had the referee call that a knockdown, the headlines for the fight would be Jake Paul knocked down in fourth round. Maybe the rest of that headline would read, still wins fight. Maybe it would read, Woodley shocks Paul, wins by decision, or later stoppage. Understand, a 10-8 round will jar the judges. It'll jar the crowd. Could you imagine that crowd if Jake Paul was given an 8 count? You know, knockdowns unsettle fighters. Suddenly, here's Jake Paul with a three-round lead, at least on my scorecard. Now it's suddenly a one-round lead. 
he might come out his corner and feel, oh, I've really got to rough this guy up. Forget my back foot game. Forget my jab. Now I'm going to be a tough guy. Now I'm going to be the slugger in the pocket. Maybe Woodley wouldn't have had to have looked for Paul after that point. Maybe Paul would have given up his foot speed advantage to trade in the pocket. Could you imagine the announcers, if this was called a knockdown, I know the telecast was kind of stayed, right? The guys were kind of casual, right? At times, the guys sounded a little bit skeptical. There's no skepticism when there's a knockdown. Even a TV commentator who's in a bit of a coma would have to realize that something's going on in the fight. So understand, this fight, th that knockdown, that's not called a knockdown, badly hurt Woodley. Because Woodley comes out of the fourth round, down two rounds, in an eight-round fight, down a quarter of the fight. Rather than being down one round, with the ability to tie things up in the fifth. Also, Jake Paul, who knows he was knocked down. If anybody in the building knows that a fighter was caught and that the ropes held him up, it's the fighter. Right? Jake Paul had to feel encouraged. He's thinking, man, I'm just glad that no one realized that was a knockdown. I'm just glad that I lost that round 10-9, not 10-8. Right? Understand, too, the scoring gap. There's a big difference between being down one round after four, right? And being down two rounds after four. Changes Woodley's game somewhat, right? Paul is able to stay outside. Paul's like, hey, I still got this. I'm up two rounds with four rounds to go. So let me boo the ref here. I thought that was ridiculous. Let me also boo the announcing crew. Right? They were saying, oh, I guess the ref thought that wasn't a knockdown. Hey, look. Who cares what the ref thinks? You have instant replay. You know that fourth round is a knockdown. Right? This is shades of the 12th round, Ugas Porter, where that was clearly a knockdown. Right? I do hope that the sanctioning bodies and, and the people involved in coming up with rules for the sport make it clear to refs. Look, if a guy hits the canvas off a punch, that's a knockdown. Understand, too, the punch doesn't even have to hurt the fighter who hits the canvas. If that guy is just off balance and hit at the right time, and goes down because of the punch. That's a knockdown. Let me also say, too, that in that fourth round, Woodley lands a pretty good left hand. Right? The tone of the fight would have been different. The fighters would have been dealing with a different crowd. Woodley's demand for a rematch would actually have extra gravitas because people would say, hey, Jake, you got knocked down by this man. Are you not going to give him a rematch? Why is there some nonsensical talk about a tattoo and all this other stuff? You got knocked down. Don't you have unfinished business with this man? But that's not the way we're viewing it. So Jake Paul then gets back on the horse. Still has the foot speed advantage. Understands that he needs to come in a couple of times around. Throw some punches. Right? At one point he tries an uppercut. Right? Throw some punches. To win the rounds, he understood this was a low action fight. Still. And this is something both guys have to clean up on. Right? These guys, <laughs> these guys were bone tired at the end of the fight. Right, you were wondering how Jake Paul could be that tired against an opponent this low volume. 
Folks, he was fighting Tyron Woodley, not Joe Fraser. This was not the thriller in Manila. Right? And so the idea that in this slow paced a fight, both of these guys, both of them, were bone tired. Folks, this wasn't even a 10 round fight. This was an eight round fight. If you're asking yourself, hey, is Jake Paul ready for the big time to fight contenders? All you have to do is look at how tired he is at the end of this fight. After eight rounds, right? You get the feeling <laughs> that if a world-class opponent just moves a little bit more than Tyrod Woodley does, right? If you have a referee that actually counts knockdowns, a world-class opponent might be able to just wait Jake Paul out to the sixth round of a fight, right? Win one or two of the early rounds, and then, of course, force him to move his hands and move his feet in round six to 12. So Jake Paul, I congratulate him here. He is a skilled fighter. But folks, while he's fit, he's not in boxing shape. Right, this guy looked tired at the end of a fight that for at least the first three rounds was low action. If he's going to be a cruiser or a world-class light heavyweight, he's going to have to clean that up. Right? He'd have no shot against a fighter with stamina like a bivol. Right? No shot whatsoever. If his stamina if his stamina is this bad. Right? Let me also say too, he has a clear path to riches. Because he has foot speed, because he has a back foot stylistically. If he could continue to fight guys who can't match his foot speed, right, who can't get by his jab for several rounds, which is what happened here. In eight round fights, Jake Paul is going to end up building two to three round leads by the midway point of the fight, as he did here. Right? He has a three-round to non-lead before we even get to the fourth round. Let me also say this, too. And I know in his first fight, he dropped the guy off a left hook. But what I want Paul to do is to understand that he needs a left hand that is close to his right hand. Right? I also think he needs to look closely at I think stylistically it's a great film, Floyd Mayweather off a long layoff against Juan Manuel Marquez, a great counterpuncher, right? You'll notice Floyd is moving. He has lateral movement. He's moving around the pocket. You'll notice that Floyd has a spectacular left hook that he can jump in the pocket and lead on, right? Like Jake Paul against Woodley. Mayweather had the foot speed advantage on Marquez. You'll also notice, though, that Mayweather has the great straight right hand. And Mayweather's the counterpuncher, just like Jake Paul. Now, I'm not here saying Jake Paul is remotely close to one of the all-time greats. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is Paul does have some foot speed. If he's going to fight other guys who are new to the sport, like Tyron Woodley, who may not have confidence in his foot speed, right? Then Jake Paul should look at Mayweather films to see how to marry that lateral movement. Let's give BJ Flores credit, too, on Paul's lateral movement, right? Paul is moving left and right. 
What Paul needs to do is he needs to look at films like Mayweather films on how Mayweather uses his lateral movement. He also needs to realize that he doesn't need to move as much around the ring as he does. Right? Mayweather moves, but there's an economy of movement. Mayweather is close enough to his opponent where sometimes when the opponent throws, Mayweather can just move his head back, have the punch end here. You don't have to be two feet further away for that to happen. As Jake Paul has more fights, he's going to realize how to make his movement be more effective without tiring himself out. But what you're dealing with here, and don't fall for the persona, right? I'm guessing with time, Jake Paul press conferences and weigh-ins are going to be more civil, right? Boxing does build character. Over time, even world-class talents realize that if they have a bad night, they could lose to their opponent, right? There's a certain amount of respect. Jake Paul should not be, in my opinion, running around trying to grab people's baseball caps at weigh-ins, right? But over time, what Jake Paul, who already knows how to counterpunch, who already has lateral movement in his game, who has a big right hand, but who understands that he needs to know how to box and have a back foot game to make that right hand effective. Right? As Jake Paul learns the game, he's going to be more efficient. Let's just say right now he's not fully there. Right? Bone tired. Let me also say, too, you knew Woodley had a right hand looking at his MMA films. Right? I understand getting hit with Woodley's left hand. You say, okay, well, you know, gee, maybe Jake was focused on the right hand. Right? But, but how do you end up getting hit from long distance by Woodley's right hand? Right? It's not even a short right hand. So Jake Paul needs to tighten up his defense. And he needs to work a lot on his stamina, right? I congratulate him. He, he is the better fighter than Tyron Woodley. I would not expect a different result in a rematch. I don't view Jake Paul as a celebrity fighter. It's clear from his corner, right? Flores, Love, it's clear from his technique. The fact that he's a counterpuncher. The fact that he's outside, he's conscientious of spacing, and he's shooting a jab, doing enough to win the slow rounds, right? It's clear to me that he's taking the sport seriously. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.